The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. All right, thank you. Uh, my presentation this morning is on pre-placed aggregate concrete. It's a repair technique that's probably not as well known as maybe it should be. Uh, it has its applications, it has its limitations, and I'm hoping to have all of you walk out of here with a little better understanding of what it is. We've talked a lot about Tony Murray, but I want to throw my two cents in. Tony is, was really integral with getting me involved with ACI. He, as you can see, he was chair of 546 from 1993 to 1999. That was when I first started getting involved with ACI. Tony welcomed me to ACI, got me involved with 546, and I, as uh, as you heard from Pete, I later became chair of that committee. Uh, he was a great man, uh, a terrific innovator, and uh, a great mentor to me. So, the question I've got for you today is, what is pre-placed aggregate concrete? Or maybe, I'm not really sure I even know what pre-placed concrete even is, and don't think I would use it if I did. I'm hoping that, that I'll be able to convince you otherwise today. Uh, our learning objectives, for this morning are, are pretty brief. I, I want you to come away from this little 25 minute talk or so with a better understanding of what pre-placed aggregate concrete is and how it is installed. So we'll go through both some basics and a, a few more detailed applications of pre-placed aggregate concrete, how to do it. I'd like you to walk away understanding how pre-placed aggregate concrete can be used for concrete repairs because it, it does have its applications, including Let's not be too rosy here, including both its advantages and its disadvantages when compared to more conventional repair techniques. And then lastly, I'd like you to know and understand uh, what are the typical applications? Where is it most used? Not that you can't go outside that, but, but where is it most used? So uh, ACI 116 defines pre-placed aggregate concrete as concrete that is produced by placing coarse aggregate in a form and then injecting Portland cement sand grout, usually with admixtures to fill the void. The photo that you see at the bottom there is a, a kind of an interesting photo. This was from a nuclear power plant in South Carolina that Restruction did, that Tony's firm did, uh, where they were demonstrating the efficacy of pre-placed aggregate concrete for some repairs to the, to the, uh, to the plant. And you can see here, there's the injection so they are, they are, you can see the grout starting to come up here. This is unique in that they used a uh, acrylic form so you could actually physically see the grout going up. I've got a few more pictures from this later on. So here's a little demonstration, a little graphic of what pre-placed aggregate concrete construction looks like. I'll go into this again in more detail, but this is kind of the 30,000 foot view. First thing that you do is you prepare the existing concrete surfaces and build some formwork. Then you install whatever reinforcement you may need and place the coarse aggregate. Seal the formwork at the bottom. We'll talk about that. The formwork is really important because when you put the, uh, the, the grout in, not only do you have to deal with head pressures, but you've got to deal with the pressure of, the, uh, of the, the injecting the grout. And then you mix the grout. And finally, you pump it. So that's what the process looks like. So a little bit of a history of what pre-placed aggregate concrete looks like. The first application was in 1937, so it's about 80 years old, in a Santa Fe Railroad tunnel near Martinez, California. That was the first application. What's interesting is that that was the first application, and then after that was done, then they started doing research on the method. So that's a little different than what we do now. Now we tend to research living daylights out of something before we uh, actually use it, but they, they installed it. It worked pretty well. They researched it, and in 1940, they got a patent. The first, the first uh, method had the trade name Prepacky. I, I noticed that uh, 
uh, the people in the in the 30s and 40s were not particularly creative with their trade names. <laughs> that that's kind of normal. Pre-packy for pre-placed aggregate concrete, and uh, most of the early work was for dams, bridges, and tunnel lightings. It it did have early in in its use, and I will go through and show you come a couple of uh, photos. Was used heavily for dams. Here's the Hoover Dam. Very applicable given our. Uh, uh, next convention in, in Las Vegas. This was taken in the early 1940s. Kind of hard to see because of the perspective. But this is a spillway, and you can imagine how huge the spillways are in the Hoover Dam. And this was erosion that had occurred from the water going down the spillway. The, the erosion width was 36 feet deep, 33 feet wide and 36 feet deep. Amazing amount of erosion that had occurred. And they repaired that with pre-placed aggregate concrete. Here's another one near where I live. This is in Nederland, Colorado. This is the Barker Dam. This dam was uh, strengthened and resurfaced in 1947. What they did was they did this in the, uh, in the wintertime when the water in the dam was very low. And they built forms using precast concrete. And then they filled the forms with aggregate and uh, got it all built up before they grouted any of it. And then they filled the, the dam, so you can understand it took some time, they filled the dam with, with water for two reasons. One, to preload this, and two, to cool the, the concrete. As you can imagine, this is going to, as this concrete all hydrates, there's going to be a tremendous amount of heat that's, that's given off. So the water was actually used to cool it. And they grouted this in one operation bottom to top over 10 days. Just an amazing thing that was done in 1947. So some applications for pre-placed for pre -placed concrete repair. One of the big strengths of pre-placed concrete is that it's shrinkage. Uh, because of the way that the, the grout is installed and the point-to-point -point contact of the aggregate and because of some of the admixtures that are typically put in, which we'll talk about a little bit more later, Shrinkage is reduced by half, up to 100%. You can get virtually shrinkage-free concrete using this technique in some applications. So that really does help with, with your uh, low volume change. You can also use it when the repair concrete is needed to participate in stress distribution. Those of you who have done a lot of repairs understand that when you make a repair, very frequently the repair doesn't participate at all in, in the stress. You have to unload the concrete and then make the repair and then reload it in order to get the, the repair to take any load other than superimposed loads. And even then, the modulus elasticity plays a very big role. If you're putting in uh, materials that have a lower modulus than your parent concrete, they take a much lower uh, percentage of the load. Conversely, if you put in some of these newer repair materials that have very high modulus, you may be taking a disproportionate amount of your load into the repair area, which can lead to, to spalling and other problems. So the pre-placed concrete aggregate typically has just slightly higher modulus than conventional concrete, so it's very compatible. Uh, and the point-to-point -point, uh, contact really helps to distribute that load. It's a, it's a big advantage. The nuclear facility uses a lot of pre-placed aggregate concrete because they want heavyweight aggregate and heavyweight fines. And as you can imagine, if you take conventional concrete matrix with heavyweight aggregate, you get a lot of problems with segregation. You don't have that problem with pre-placed aggregate because you're putting the aggregate in right from the get-go and you get it exactly where you want it to be. So nuclear applications. Where you have closely spaced reinforcement. I think all of us have had problems where you have a lot of reinforcement in, a, in a, a repair and you place the repair material and then you strip the forms and there's a lot of voids. It's hard to vibrate repairs. With this type of an application, you can, you can literally place that reinforcing exact, or place that the aggregate right where you want it in between the reinforcement, pump the grout in, it, it, it can work very well. It can work very well in high lift placements. So if you've got a condition where you really need to lift, you need to, to make a very large placement all at once. The only limits for this type of application is the strength of the forms. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And 
the fact that you got to be able to pump it. You got to be able to pump it all the way up and you got to have enough pumps and you got to have the right kind of pumps to be able to do it. You can't stop, you'll have cold joints. And then lastly, this is a very interesting one and I, as former chair of 546, I would encourage you to take a look at this. This is extraordinarily interesting. But pre-placed aggregate repairs work extremely well in underwater repairs. Uh, you would think that it wouldn't work because you're going to put the aggregate in, then you're going to pump the grout, the water's going to get in, it's going to contaminate it. But with the anti-washout uh, admixtures that, that are available, you can pump this material in underwater, it'll displace the water and create a, a, a very nice repair. So let's talk now, I've been leading up to this for a while, let's talk now about really how you do this. What does it really look like and what, what, how, how do you achieve a good repair using the pre-placed aggregate? So first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the edges of the repair are, uh, are clean, not contaminated. With these types of repairs, because you're pumping in the grout, you, you typically do want to pre-saturate the, the surfaces of the repairs and let them dry so that you get a good saturated surface dry condition. And then you saturate the aggregate as well for the same reason. You're not wanting to draw the, the moisture from your grout out into the aggregate either. You want that moisture to be able to be there to hydrate the cement. You use a gap-graded aggregate, makes sense. You don't want a lot of fines in this aggregate. The fines are all coming from the grout. Uh, common applications, they do vary obviously, but for common applications about 10% pass a three-quarter inch sieve and no more than 2% pass a half. So it's, it's good gap-graded material. The forms, as you can imagine, the forms have to be very strong. This is where you spend your money on, on these types of repairs. They have to be tight enough not only to resist the head pressure of the, of the grout, but also it's typically pumped at about 10 PSI, 1440 PSF. So it, the, the forms have to be particularly stout and you have to seal all your edges to keep the grout from running out. Uh, can't use caulk because he, typical caulking will just yield under that, those types of pressures. Mixing equipment, there's a two-tub mixer, typical. This is that uh, nuclear facility in, in South Carolina that we talked about, that's the pump that they use, that's a typical pump. Uh, the note about a backup pump is, is obvious when you have to be able to pump continuously. So this, the grout is typically tested with a flow cone. There's a, most of you have seen a flow cone, but there it is. You're looking for a flow of, of 10 to 30 seconds, site mix grout. So here's what you do. You install an inlet at, at the bottom, and you can do one of two things. You can either have, if it's a small enough application, you can pump it just all from the bottom. Or if it's a, if it's a taller application, you can have numerous inlets working up like you do with epoxy injection. So you would inject at the bottom when it reaches a certain height, close off the bottom, install your hose at the next level, move up. What's also commonly done is you'll have numerous grout tubes that are embedded in sacrificial within the, uh, within, within the mix. So you'll start at the bottom and you'll grout and then you'll, you'll plug off that and attach it to a different one that has a grout tube. It'll go up and you just keep working your way up. And this is what the one in uh, South Carolina looked like, the demonstration when it was all done. The only thing left to do is to finish the top of the repair. The top of the repair is finished in the same way as you would any normal conventional concrete. And curing is the same as conventional concrete. But you can see from this that you can get a very, very nice finish, very clean, very dense concrete using this method. So other considerations. Strength of pre-placed aggregate concrete is easily what you can get with conventional concrete and often higher. ACI 304.1, which I strongly recommend, it's a great document, states that you can get 13,000 PSI at one year. I think that document, the 304.1 document was written in, I wanna say 1998. I would be willing to bet you could get, you could get 
higher strengths than that now if you really wanted to. It, it works extremely well. Durability is outstanding. Uh, because of the way that the grout is installed, the way you get the aggregate distributed, and because of air entrainment. We'll talk about this in a minute, but the, the normal uh, admixtures that are applied to the grout have aluminum in there, and aluminum creates small air bubbles which, which naturally help the, uh, the concrete to be more durable. Heat of hydration is easily controlled. As you understand with mass concrete, any sort of mass concrete application, the heat of hydration can be a real problem. But with pre-placed aggregate, you can actually cool the forms, cool the aggregate, and cool the grout while you're placing it. So it's, you can control that temperature rather easily. And again, ACI 304.1 indicates that you can, you can install this down to about 40 to 45 degrees. Now we're talking about the admixture. So when you're pumping the grout, the grout typically includes this grout fluidifier. And the fluidifier contains the, these things that you can see. It includes a water-reducing admixture, a suspending agent, and this aluminum powder. So you, this, this admixture offsets the bleed water. You don't have a lot of bleed water with, with the grouts, reduces the water-cement ratio, retards the set time, and then most importantly for the durability point of it, it generates this hydrogen gas which allows the grout to expand slightly. That's how you can get this virtually zero shrinkage material and adds the bubbles which uh, helps with freeze-thaw durability. Another interesting application, and I know that, that Restruction has done this, is you can use epoxy instead of the cementitious grout. So instead of pumping a grout, you can pump epoxy. There are some advantages to that, but there's also some disadvantages. So I want to kind of inform you on that. It provides really great early strength and improves the bond strength, but it is highly exothermic. So you get a lot of heat with this. About two inches or so is about as thick as you want to go with these types of things. I don't know, you might be able to go a little bit more, but the heat is a real problem. And if you use wet aggregate, remember we talked about pre-saturating the aggregate for a typical repair, you wouldn't do that for the epoxy because you can actually create so much, you can actually create so much steam or so much heat that you can create steam. So here, here's some applications common applications. And this is from the 304.1 document. So these are, these are older photos. But this is a viaduct in Erie, Pennsylvania. And you can see what it looked like 26 years later. It's, it really can be very, very effective and very durable. And then here's a couple of photos from nuclear facilities where it is very commonly used. This is uh, high density concrete being packed around so a containment structure, you can, you can see how it would work well there. Okay, so how do I know if pre-placed aggregate is right for my project? Cost is higher. There's no way to get around that. It's going to cost you more than a typical repair, particularly because of the formwork. The formwork has to be more substantial, it has to be tighter, it's simply more labor intensive. But in some situations, the uh, advantages can outweigh the, the cost particularly for the, what we talked about earlier. Low shrinkage applications, high density reinforcement, lots of embedded items which would make uh, embedding con or using conventional concrete or repair mortars impossible. So thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it.